Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. So today we're going to talk about shared preferences and how they can be useful for persisting data between app launches. Um, we have a pretty simple example here uh, that I've already built out. It's really not much. There's just a text view here and a button. We can see them defined here. And then our button has an on-click listener that randomly generates a number from 0 to 100 and sets that number as the text here in this text view. Um, as we see here, it works perfectly fine, but as we see, it's also 44, and if we were to rerun the application, it defaults back to this, like, you know, empty string kind of idea. Um, ideally, what we would like to do is have that 44 persist and, you know, be there when we launch the app the next time. And so in order to do that, we need to have some way to actually write the data to disk, right? Not keep it just in memory because once the application gets killed or restarted or, you know, your phone gets restarted or whatever the case is, all that info is gone. So we obviously need a better way to handle that. So we're going to jump into shared preferences. Please hit the like button to help me out and subscribe if you are uh, brand new. So we can go ahead and bounce over to the documentation here. Um, the, I'll link this in the description here, but sh shared preferences basically work as key value pairs. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to actually get the instance of shared preferences that you need. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of copy this um, little snippet that they have for us here. And we'll just paste it in right here. Uh, we'll call this shared prefs. We're going to put it inside of a lazy block because we need to access the activity and uh, if we were to run that right off the bat there, when the, this file gets created, it would uh, crash at runtime. Um, so in here, we basically have two little parameters that we need to specify. Um, one of them is the, I forget exactly what it's called, the, the mode, yeah, um, basically how you want to read the file. It's just defaults are the best ideas to do context mode private. Um, just basically means that only your application should be able to write, read and write to this file. So it's pretty safe to store some information, obviously not personal identification information or anything super sensitive, um, but you know, basic information, it's more than okay to do it. Uh, and then we need the actual string here that's the name of the file that you want to read and write from. So a pretty common pattern here is using the build config application ID, and then you know maybe we'll do shared preferences. Um, and this is just going to be the name of the file here. The idea being that this is supposed to be unique per device. So you know, having that um, as part of the path or part of the actual file name should basically be reserved for your application. Um, and then now we get to work with shared preferences. So it's pretty straightforward to get it, especially in an activity. Um, and then here we want to actually update shared preferences, right? So we not only set the text, but we also want to then save that number. So we'll talk or we'll ask our shared preferences here for the editor, just call dot edit on it. And then from here, you can actually make changes and modifications to uh, the file itself. We're going to use, um, there's a handful of put functions here for basically all the primitives. Put string is really powerful. I just want to call that out. You know, even if you had an actual object that you wanted to store in shared preferences, you can always serialize that down into a JSON string with, you know, JSON, Moshi, whatever your, your JSON tool is. Um, you could write that string to shared preferences. And then when you want to read from it, you can read that string and then, you know, recreate your object by parsing that JSON. So the string one is actually extremely uh, powerful, but we're just going to be using the put int because that's what our number is. And then, as I mentioned earlier, it is key value pairs, right? So we're just going to go with, you know, random number and then number. Um, you'll see here that there's a little, you know, caution here. Uh, and that means they're bringing this up because they recognize a call to edit without commit or apply afterwards. Um, I believe apply is the one we're supposed to be using nowadays, but basically you don't write any of that down until the apply actually happens. Um, so they're just warning you like, hey, you haven't actually saved anything yet. Other than that, that will actually save our integer that we generate and to share preferences, but we also then want to read from it from the beginning um, to basically, you know, restore whatever the last number was here that we saw, right? Um, so very easily, we can just say text view dot text equals our shared preferences. And I believe it is, uh, yep, just get int here. Now it's important that you have the same, uh, you know, key here. Um, so we'll just give it a default value real quick and then calling dot two string so we can write. It's important to have this be exactly the same, right? Because again, it works exactly like a map. So you want to make sure that you're writing the 
you know, correctly to the map, and then I guess equally as important, you know, reading correctly from the map. Um, so it might be a better idea here to, you know, store this as a little bit of a variable. So we could just do that really quickly. And so here we've just created this, uh, you know, this key here, right, that we can just use, um, that we can just reference, and then we use that here for the get and the put calls just to make sure that we are, uh, you know, saving things appropriately. So now when we go ahead and rerun this application, uh, we see that it defaults to negative one here. And every time that you read from shared preferences, um, okay, it doesn't really tell you, but this is uh, the default value if nothing is found for this, uh, th this key. Um, so in this case, we haven't written a shared preferences yet, so obviously negative one is going to be what it is. Uh, but then every time after that, we are updating the file itself. So if we click around and we stop at 15, we can go ahead and rerun the app here and we see that 15 restores the state here. We are actually saving information and reading from it correctly so we know this implementation is working properly. That's basically it. Shared preferences is pretty simple at its core, uh, but obviously it can get a little bit more intense. You know, you can create maybe a wrapper object around the implementation for shared preferences um, so that you don't have to call .edit and .put every time and, you know, you can, um, you can have functions to actually get the corresponding values that you want. Um, but, you know, that could be for a later date. This is just the bare bones. This is what you need to get up and running. And just to prove to you as well, there should be um, inside of your file explorer there, you can see that there's a data package and then another data package here. And scrolling down, looking for your application here, um, that is ours, right? If we see up here, we see com.androidfactory.sharedpreferencesdemo. So we can actually open this package. Uh, let's see. Yep, here it is. Um, sorry about that. I just had to refresh this little view here. Um, but inside of the device file explorer, we can look at the package name for our app, which matches here. They create a shared prefs kind of directory for you there. And then we'll see that the actual name of this file matches the name that we've declared here, right? So it's the application ID underscore shared preferences. And if we take a look here, we'll see that shared preferences demo underscore shared preferences dot XML. And then if we go ahead and open it, you can actually see the value that is inside of here. You can see the key that we use and value 15, which if you remember from the UI is what we had seen there. Uh, you can see here it's implemented as a map and there's an integer tag here and all that stuff. So, um, you know, you can see exactly where it is. You can open this file and see, uh, you know, what, what data is available and what isn't available and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. If you are brand new, please consider subscribing. Uh, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.